Education is under attack in Nigeria with mass school abductions being reported every other month. And it's at a time like this the country joined the rest of the world yesterday to mark the International Day to Protect Education from Attack. Plus TV Africa's Ngozika OHSC reports. It's a few days to the resumption of a new academic year, and the management of Redditon School is putting things in place to welcome students back. The academy coordinator Adeola Adesorono tells me that one of the major concerns is the safety of students due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The children's welfare is of importance to us. So the first thing we're going to do is ensure that the children come with their uh, COVID pack, which will contain their face mask and um, their hand sanitizers. COVID-19 aside, it's pretty easy to go to school in Lagos, where public basic education is free, and private schools, although relatively expensive, are accessible. The concerns are different in northern Nigeria, where school enrollment is low and attacks on schools are increasing. Education is very accessible in Lagos State because if you look everywhere, uh, by the time you move to one, st uh, one street to another, you see a school. But um, in the northern states, Due to the banditry, like you mentioned, a lot of schools have had to, you know, they've had to shut down because of the kidnapping and the insurgency and the banditry. No fewer than 1,400 students have been kidnapped from their schools in northern Nigeria since March 2020. According to SBM Intelligence, 17 teachers have been abducted, 16 people killed, and more than 200 million naira paid in ransom since then. As a result of that, some states have been forced to close schools. Confident McHarry is the security analyst at SBM Intelligence Lagos. Provide better security for the schools in these areas would be to root out uh, insecurity in these particular areas and bring government close to the people. But right now, it is seeming, it is seeming like an uphill task. Uh, honestly, without security, education cannot continue. It can't happen. Um, it's, it's no rocket science. When people do not feel secure to send their children to school, there will be no education taking place. It's evident that education in Nigeria is under attack. And as the world marks this day, parents, educationists, and every concerned citizen wishes authority can do better to protect our schools. Education can be a door opener and social leveler. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika Ohaichesi. Thank you, Ngozika, for that report. And like it was rightly mentioned, Thursday, September 9th, was the International Day to Protect Education from Attack. And to commemorate that day, the United Nations Humanitarian Coordinator, um, Edward Callan, um, put out a speech basically condemning the incident attacks on schools in Nigeria. And he noted that 1.3 million children have been impacted by the attacks on schools in the country. Um, Jida Johnson, Chief Lecturer in Nigerian Institute of Journalism, thanks for joining us again. It's a pleasure to be with you. Okay. M my first question is, we know these... Uh, almost a reality, like a daily reality in Nigeria, the attack on school children. But why does it seem that we need foreigners, or do we need foreigners to tell us to sit up before we do? Well, that means that the future is destroyed. That's, that's the stark reality. Um, because if the educational sector is truncated as a result of security challenges, as a result of incoherent government policies, and as a result of human factors that could be addressed by decisive leadership, the future is already truncated. And that's, that's just the reality. And for example, in Cardinal State, third term has been canceled. The students have been directed to resume, to resume on September, on September, on September 12th. And in that same state, we saw a situation whereby people that operate private business in terms of investing in the educational sector um, uh, are left alone when they were faced with security challenges of banditry and kidnapping of their, of their students. You saw the figure which your correspondent provided with over 202 million pedas as well. So it's the future of the country that is at stake because you train up a child today and then you secure the future. Um, Refuse to train up a child today and you destroy 
and you destroy, destroy the future. So we don't need any soothsayer to let us know that this factor will affect our economy, will affect our nation, both from political, economic, psychological uh, perspective. You recall that in Nigeria, as a result of the South being advanced in education more than the North, we created a um, different type of system um, in terms of quota system, in terms of educationally disadvantaged state, in order to close the gap between the North and the South. And then during the course of the week, we had the governor of Cardinal State saying that um, as a result of these advantages, this special treatment that I've been given to, to Northern students, it has encouraged laziness and the rest of it. And with what we are witnessing in the North, where schools calendar have been, have been, have been outrightly cancelled, some have been truncated, the gap between the North and the South in terms of educational sector will, will still will be wider in, 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 the, in the near in the, in the near in the near term so we don't need the foreigner to tell us the factors are there the indices are there to let us know that we need to do something urgently there should be a critical intervention but the unfortunate thing of what we have witnessed even in our newspaper review over time is that this sector has been left alone for the private sector and these sectors have been, have been left alone for private individuals to take care of their security. When school children are kidnapped, it's left for the parents, you recall, in one of our programs, whereby they were sending um, a motorcycles to the, to the bandits. They were giving them rice. They were giving them maggi to feed their children. And the governor said that he's not ready to pay any money. And then they, if they want, they can come and kidnap the children. But the secretary withdrew his his son for public school. So that, that's, that's, that's the challenge. And the, the, in, in your correspondent report, we saw that we compared Lagos, take away private education. I attended the public school, I attended the public primary school, I attended the public secondary school, I attended the public university. Now, just imagine if those schools were not in place, what would have happened? Just imagine if I didn't have that opportunity to go to public school. And I'll give you this so that I'll allow you to ask another question. You know, I attended primary school, primary three, primary four, and five in the afternoon in Lagos. I'm telling you, in the 70s. My primary three, my primary four, and primary four were done in the afternoon. But when Alaji Latif Jaconde became the governor of Lagos, he changed the entire system so that it was possible for every student to attend schools in the public. In actual sense, so my, 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 my senior brother attended schools in the evening. So there were morning sessions, there were afternoon sessions, there were evening sessions in our educational sector, if some people don't know that. In fact, when I tell my son about it, he said that it's not possible. And I told him it's possible. In other words, it's the reality of our time, but it was changed by constructive government policy. So imagine if Jack Conde hadn't made the investment in, in education, if the governors of Second Republic Adding made direct investment in education, where would we find assets? I told my son, I said, if I have to pay what I'm paying for you to go to school, I will not go to school. And the situation is for many people in my generation. Many people in my generation, if we have to pay what we are paying for our children to go to school now, if our parents have to pay that, we won't go to school. We'll have learned one trade or the other. So even the schools that are available, they are expensive because government is playing leave service. All you need to do is to pay a visit to these schools, and you see what is happening. It's sad. All right, Judy Johnson. Um, one one thing you know that um, I have tried to not accept is uh, you know victory for terrorists. Um, but seeing that we have this many children out of school, seeing that we have this many schools shut down across mm -hmm. northern Nigeria and other parts. Um, we've also seen, of course, Nigeria's figures with regards to out-of-school children, and you know things like this will definitely add to those figures. Um, does this mean that the Nigerian government has lost in that aspect? Well, we, it is clear. You know, if you, if you if you if you look at different reports, intervention agency, UNESCO report, UNICEF report with respect to children out of school, you'll be shocked. Sure. Now, even the ones that are in school, that we have managed to get into school, they can't go to school. Like I told you, it shows a clear failure of, of government, 
of government of government policy. Primary education, you see, we, when we talk about federalism, primary education should be left for the local government. That we need we need to the resources from that should come from should go straight to to to, to the local government so that um, we can each local government can enroll pupils at their own they know the peculiarity of their various um various localities and they can meet up with that with that challenges. There's no doubt that it's been a failure of government in terms of its core responsibility. It was when children were kidnapped, when pupils and students were kidnapped, we had but it meant it meant no there was no response from the government. It was like business as it was it was just like a normal life as far as government response is concerned. These people they are not spirit. They are not people that cannot be trapped. There are people that can be trapped. They use what our intelligence community doing. Not a single bandit has been arrested, prosecuted for kidnapping school people. At least we should be able to draw a red line to say, oh, no, 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 no. At this level, you can't come to this basis. But what do we do? What do we do? We reward criminality. So when you reward criminality, uh, it pays to it pays to be a criminal in a lawless country that has no respect and dignity for human life than for you to be someone that that obeys that obeys the law and it's just all you need to do is just to drive on the roads of our of, 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 of our nation whereby you see you see um the, the the lawmakers become the lawbreaker you see governors president and public officials that are meant to 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 respect the sanctity and the dignity of human life they'll be driving against the traffic and they'll be using siren to push you up the road now i've said it if you want to really affect the educational sector if you're a civil servant and you're a public official, your children must go to public schools. They must go to public schools because you are serving the public and you are serving the public. Your children, you can't send, why should the president send his children to school abroad? Why should the governor send his children to a private school? If, why should a commissioner send the children to a private school? Does that make any sense? If you are serving the public, both you and your household should serve the public until we make it a requirement for every civil servant, for every public servant, both elected and appointed, to send their children to public schools. I can assure you that the public schools, the, the, the challenges we are having, we will still have it. Okay. I remember, I'll tell you this, and I'm telling you for a fact. When, why, why was the law school taken to Kano? Why? Why was law school cited in Kano? It was because Abacha's daughter wanted to go to law school. Why was the law school, uh, um, the law school in Buari, when Abu Salam's daughter was was going to 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 the law school in Buari? Ask anybody. These these are facts that can be investigated. We know who built the estate. We know when their children are going to schools, they know how to provide this security. So that's the step we need to take. Once we take that steps to insist and to ensure that the children of the House of Speaker of House of Rep go to public school, the speaker, the, the children of the Senate President goes to public school, I can tell you that these security issues will be addressed. You are even talking about the security issues. What about the infrastructure? Go and look at the toilet facilities in these schools. Go and look at the 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 the, 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 the laboratories of this school. Go and look at the, the staff room. Of this of this school it's it's, it's, it's unbelievable okay i'm just talking about the bit jida johnson um one of the concerns nigerians have had be over this issue of insecurity in schools is that the, the, they don't seem to be hearing from the president they don't seem to you know see the president coming out to condemn this you know insecurity this attack on our education in clear terms i mean we saw a statement from edward Cullen, like i mentioned earlier so do you think the president needs to step up and speak to nigerians condemning this action and for people who are clamoring for the president's voice what what impact do you think it might make to the fight against insecurity and the protection of our schools the government is a system and one of the challenges we have with our democracy is the personalization of public administration. Mm. Must the president speak at all times? There are various institutions of the state that should respond proactively. You have, um, who are those that are in charge of the security? You have um, the inspector general of police, 
you have other agencies of government that could speak on behalf of the president. I I I I, I don't accept the fact that when I just said, oh, the president must speak. Must he speak to every situation? He shouldn't speak because that's because we have personalized that office. So until the president speaks, or we say we wait for the body language of the president. No, it's, 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 it's a government. And in the government, there are various institutions. It's not about a personality. It's about the various institutions. The Minister of Education is appointed by the president for him to be his spokesperson, to be his representative in the educational sector. So once the Minister of Education makes a statement, the statement becomes the statement of the federal government of Nigeria because a member of the federal executive executive council was the inspector general of police. But like you said, and which I agree with you, there has never been any condemnation from official quarters, not necessarily the president, but most importantly from the president in this regard because of the incessant nature of it. That okay, it has gotten to my attention. But you know what? We have seen a passive, a passive approach by those in authority to issues affecting average Nigerian that people will say, okay, let's wait for oh the president to speak. Let's must we wait for them to speak? This is democracy, they must engage the citizens with. Unfortunately, they don't care about us. That's the reality. They don't do they care about you. Oh. And I, that's why when they are sick, they go abroad to seek medical treatment. That's why when their children wants to go to school, they send their children to school abroad. You know, Johnson, and um, so, I, I, I think, you know, a lot of Nigerians would agree with your perspectives on uh, public officials using public facilities, and that includes healthcare and um, education yeah. and infrastructure, some of all of that, you know, because if you cannot, ex if you cannot put yourself through that system, you wouldn't be able to understand what the people that you're serving are dealing with. And if you, you know, do not understand that when you fall sick, you're going to go to the government hospital down the road, then, you know, you would not need to fix it for any, you know, reasons. Exactly. Um, but you I, can't I, change the system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I want, you know, you to speak on, you know, still on the out-of-school children. Can we um, also look back at prior to the security challenges? Have this, has this challenge been building up from many years of poor uh, funding and interest in the educational system in those parts of the country? Um, you know, in and, every and part, of course, no, 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 say in those parts of the country. In every part in of every, the country. Well, in every I part of the country. About, I, in every part of the country, I can tell you, for, for a fact, the number of schools in my community, the community I lived in, I've lived in their community. That's the community where my primary school is. That's the community where my secondary school is. That's the community where other schools are. And I can tell you for a fact how many schools are in that local government and what have we done, even using Lagos State as, as an index to show a reflection of what happens in the, in, the, in, the, in, the larger, in the larger society. For example, in my own primary school, where was also the site of my secondary school, uh, it's the same site that I had my primary school and later my secondary school has that same space, that same space that I used in nineteen in 1974 to 1986. That's my primary school and my school. That same space has five primary schools now. Five, that same space has five primary schools, has um, two secondary schools. So you could see that we 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 we, we are actually paying and um, leave service to it in terms of providing the basic infrastructure that is required for us to to deal with the educational educational challenges that that we have to increase enrollment what's the what's the ratio of teacher to student so like you pointed out it's a problem that has that has been developing over the years and it's cascading when people talk about the standard of education you know what happens because we don't have space and you can go and investigate this from Lagos to Kaduna, Kaduna to Kavancha, Kavancha to Kebi, Kebi to Bauchi, to Bayasa. You can go and investigate this. In public schools, children are not permitted to fail. You promote every one of them. Because there are no spaces. Because if they are meant to repeat the classes, where are you going to put the new ones that you have been able You can go and do your investigation. Okay. So this... There is, there is a major crisis in the educational sector, mm -hmm. and if we don't throw spotlight to it, like you are throwing spotlight to it, and if there is no intervention, I'm telling you, 
everything will collapse. Okay, talking about intervention, um, Jide Johnson, we know that the um, 2021 to 2022 academic session is beginning. Uh, most states have announced um, that, you know, the, the new session would commence. Lagos State has put out the announcement, Katsina State as well. So for Katsina State in, in particular, and for other northern states in general, we know that academic activities was halted. Some states indefinitely suspended school activities because of the insecurity, and now they've announced that schools can resume. But one of the questions I ask, you know, when we discussed earlier on top training was what's the infrastructure that the government, um, for example, of Katina State, ha of Kaduna State, have put in place, you know, to ensure that students are not kidnapped anymore beyond just making an announcement that school has resumed and that it can proceed to the next, to the next term? You know, while we were young, um, the PT Association, the Parents Teacher Association was very strong. And they were major critical stakeholder in the fashioning out of the educational policy that that we have in Nigeria. What's the role of the PTA? What's the level of engagement? It's clear that um, in Casina, for example, um, um, mobile network has been shut down in about ten local governments. We read it in the papers. About ten. Today, Johnson, can you hear us? Oh, uh, seems we may have lost uh, uh, Jide Johnson there uh, to uh, well network challenges. And it Sorry. just might be a perfect time to wrap up the conversation this morning. I uh, would say thank you for being with us all through the week, starting from Monday. And of course, uh, we want to wish you a very, very beautiful weekend ahead. Um, if you missed out on any conversation all through this week, you remember you can catch up on our social media platforms. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram, same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and the new one at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Yes, and do engage with all our content there. The comment section is always open for you to let us know what you think about these stories making the headlines across Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Gie Ogbonwa. Have a great weekend.